What started as an evening jog ended with a knife getting held to his throat. What's up guys? Ryan here with Tampa Carry. I'm out in Lakeland today. I'm at Lake Hollingsworth. This place is beautiful. It's like the Bay Shore of Lakeland. So recently I had a student in the class. He said that he was jogging here uh, one night and he thought it was just a normal jog, but it escalated very rapidly. My name is Jeremiah Rodriguez and uh, about two years ago, I was jogging around uh, Lake Hollingsworth in Lakeland at night. It was around 10 o'clock at night and uh, somebody, these two guys had hit me had uh, jumped on my back. I fell to my knees. Well, why didn't you like hear them running up or did you know I that had, they were there? I had headphones on. I wasn't aware of my surroundings. And um, they uh, they attacked me. I fell on my knees and I tried to roll over, but one of them had a knife to my neck. And uh, it, was, it was scary. You know, I felt, I felt like I couldn't do anything. I couldn't mm -hmm. move, I froze. I told myself never again. So then the guys like started patting you down and yeah, you know, basically took everything I had, my keys, my wallet, and took off. So if you would have had a gun that day, what do you think you would have done, or what was the big takeaway from that kind of moment? If I would have had a, a concealed weapon, I definitely would have defended myself and used deadly force, but I didn't. So do you jog anymore with headphones on? Never. I'm always aware of my surroundings, always paying attention to people. What advice would you give to other people to try to avoid that same violent encounter you were in? Be aware of your surroundings. You know, be aware of your surroundings. Always look ahead of you. Don't wear headphones um, and get a concealed permit. You know, you feel safe. Okay, let's ask ourselves the big questions. You know, question number one, how can this situation be avoided? You know, one of the big mistakes that was made is that he lacked the situational awareness. Even though you're jogging, you know, it's very common to have earbuds in. It's what pretty much everybody does, right? But you gotta understand that the wolves can see that and they can see that you can't hear them. It gives them a huge advantage uh, to sneak up and attack you. The second thing is, just because you're jogging, you still gotta keep your head on a swivel. You still gotta be scanning around you every four or five steps just to see what is happening. If that one thing would have been done, this entire situation could have been avoided in my opinion. You know, the next part is what level of force can actually be used? Obviously we can use physical force or violence to get these scumbags off of you, but can you use or threaten the use of deadly force? Florida statute 776.012 subsection two says a person is justified in using or threatening to use deadly force if he or she reasonably believes that such force is necessary to prevent imminent death, great bodily harm, or the imminent commission of a forceful felony. In my opinion, uh, I would definitely have a reasonable belief of imminent death. If they're holding a knife to my throat, I mean, what else am I supposed to believe here, right? The challenging part is actually getting your gun out and getting it onto that threat. Number one, you gotta carry your gun every single day, even when you're just jogging around a lake. And you may have been jogging around this lake every single day for the last 10 years, never had an issue, but that one day that you don't have it, that's the day bad stuff happens. You gotta have it every single day. Number two, this is why I really love to carry in the appendix position, because while I was on my back, if I was a victim here, if I was on my back, I could easily be able to get that gun out of the holster and fire it from retention. So that means the butt of the gun would be touching my side and then you could just kind of point it and let it rip. The challenging part is that this is very, very dangerous, right? So you wanna make sure you practice this slowly and practice it a lot, because if you ever have to use it, it's gonna be a pretty critical skill. So where's that line in the sand? You know, the line in the sand really is as soon as that scumbag brought a knife uh, you really don't have much of a choice. The massive mistake that was made here is that these bad guys were able to get up close and personal. They were able to already push uh, him onto the ground. They were able to pin him there and get that knife on his throat. And uh, he really lost the element of surprise. You know, I say it all the time, but bad guys always start off with a massive advantage over you because they know what is happening and we do not. You may think you're just putting groceries in the back of your car, 
but there's a predator out there watching you. I wanna know what you guys would have done in this situation. I wanna know if you carry your gun when you're out there exercising. Leave that comment down below. If you guys haven't gotten a copy of my new book yet, make sure you pick it up. I'll put a link down in the description. Florida Concealed Carry Law. It'll teach you everything you need to know to become a safe and a responsible concealed carry permit holder. I think that's all I got, guys. Stay safe and keep training.